Out. All right, what's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from the Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, headquarters of PHP Agency, headquarters of Money Smart Movement Team. And uh, listen, guys, I want you to know, we treat business like sport. And who better to help us understand what to put in our bodies? Because listen, the days of me in the Marine Corps, the days of me uh, in the prime of my athletic life, whatever that was, playing uh, football and basketball and track and swimming at Morton High School. Go Mustangs. Those days are long gone. But I'm so glad that in the sport of business, I can play this for the rest of my life. But I realized that it's less physical, uh, but more mental and emotional and spiritual. But all that resonates from how we take care of our bodies. So if you're tuning in right now, I'm glad you're here because, man, I'm excited to have my chiropractor, the guy that helps me is you guys watch my Snapchats, you guys watch my Instagram stories. It's his office that I am at getting his loving touch. Yes. <laughs> to <it>. yes. <laughs> Dr. Mead, welcome to the show, man. Awesome, man. Great to be here. Yeah. I just like I think your third or fourth office is you guys keep expanding and growing, influencing more lives and changing and saving them, you know, financially. But we're here to kind of talk health, yeah. lifestyle and kind of uh, yeah. be kind of an intervention because we <laughs> want to be uh, taking care of our, we talked a lot about wealth management and inheritance and yeah. passing wealth on, but in good stewardship. Yeah, right, but right. One of the things that we're not really good stewardship with is this temple that God blessed us with. Our bodies. Yes. Our bodies. Yes. Right. And so we are given this, we've got this life to live and we're, we're all about good stewardship with our lives, with stewardship with our finances, our family, our yeah. time, all these things that you help people coach and manage. Yeah. But are we managing what we do with our fork and spoon? Fork and spoon. What you eating? What you putting in your body? Yeah. So. Most people know that saying you are what you eat. eat. But do you actually sit down and contemplate that every time? You're about to put that cheeseburger in your mouth or those, uh, those chili cheese fries. Or we were just here. talking about double double in and outs last night, animal style. Oh, you guys know you love it. Yeah. I, if I hit the West Coast, I guess <laughs> I might have to go on a vacation day because I heard that's the bomb. But you know, you won't find me through our local drive-through at Portillo's. Unfortunately, I won't be picking you guys up a chocolate chip, the chocolate cake milk chip Ooh. anytime soon. Oh, the chocolate half slice. Yeah. Chocolate. Oh. I heard it's to die for. I, I think I'll pass. You know, I mean, one of those things not on my bucket list. But I think, you know, giving people the opportunity to be proactive. We want to be proactive with our finances. But where are you going to be? The biggest cause of money issues, bankruptcy, and financial stress is health-related issues. Well, let's talk about that. Yeah. So, guys, if you guys are tuning into the show and you haven't done so already, I'm going to give you a reason to share this episode. This is the Money Smart Show. I'm your Money Smart Guy. And I want to give you guys a special invitation for um, for an event we're actually hosting tonight. Um, there is a business networking event downtown. Um, there is an entrepreneurial story that I like to introduce you to. But if you'd like to be into, uh, uh, introduced to a lot of uh, uh, high-level people tonight at a networking event that I'm co-hosting downtown Chicago, I'll give you the address. The person that shares this video the most, you're going to get a special invitation, assuming that you're in the Chicago land area now let's, let's talk about let's talk about uh, our, our our health real quick because yeah. you just something uh, said something very powerful there oftentimes we bust our tails to gain uh financial uh, a financial to, to gain financially yeah but yet if we don't take care of our bodies we spend all that financial gain to regain our health yeah it, it doesn't make sense no and yeah there's a point of diminishing returns you, yeah. you can only push this body so far before before it really breaks down i always say i know that the power that made the body heals the body the do god put the best doctor inside us yes but if we don't fuel it right we don't move it right yep. we don't give it proper rest and, and and give it time to meditate and prayer there's these facets of health that many of us ignore and when we're busy most of you out there probably watching or listening are crazy busy yeah you know and are we busy or are we productive and I know you want to be productive with yeah. what we do with finances, but are you productive with your health? Yeah. Because you're pushing through, you're burning through. Most people I meet every day in my office are running on fumes. Got it. Well, that's awesome. So if you guys are out there right now, you say, listen, I'm, I'm building a business. And some of you guys, we joke about it sometimes here, Doc. Uh, we'll, let's take lunch at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Because mm -hmm. we, we pick our heads up and realize, oh, my gosh, it's already in the afternoon. We just have bad eating habits. So us as entrepreneurs, for those of you watching this, how can we best 
help ourselves with fork and spoon because we want to go run out to the Portillo's. We want to go run out to the fast food. What's the best way for us to eat to better serve us sure. in well, business? I think, you know, there's so many diets out there. I mean, you've probably, everybody's probably tried an Atkins, a South Beach, you know, yeah. an Oprah diet, a Dr. Phil, whatever paleo, yeah, yeah, the paleo, yeah. the keto, keto. The, all these things. And they do have good facets, but I think, um, the biggest thing that individuals have to do is be mindful of their eating patterns and create some a double salad yellow lines. Like when you're driving down the highway, you cross that freeway on the other side of traffic and it's a disaster. The yeah. same thing with our health. So I think I don't like most people. If some people following a diet, it doesn't sound fun. Anyone watching this. I mean, the first letter, three letters of diet spell die. It doesn't sound like a comfortable <laughs> process I overall. Of, I never thought about that. So being mindful of our words, what we put in our mind, you know, but I think if you really put it into perspective, it's giving people some simple action steps, mm-hmm. following huge diet plans and very restrictive eating. You'll have a, you'll, you'll get good for a couple of days, but then you yeah. cheat and then you quit. I yeah. mean, that, that's the idea. So we want to create a, a formula for success that if most people were doing two of these three things that you could take action on once you finish watching this podcast, yeah. you'd, you'd be moving in the right direction. Then we, you can always fine tune things along the way as we move through. So uh, really the three main changes I coach most people into making is a simplistic way is uh, change the meats you're eating. You know, change your meat. Change your meat. Because you're not just what you eat; you're what your animals just ate or what they grew up on too. So you know, we go down to Portillo's or you're in and out. Was it the double double? No, they're, they're yeah. An, animal style. Animal style. <laughs> what, what is the quality of that that dollar menu burger don't that you know. pick up? I you know? know. Yeah. So these these are unfortunately are not to go off on a tangent, but our agricultural, our food raising industries, it's it's bigger, ba- faster, cheaper with no really mindfulness of that, what kind of end product it's producing. It's meat, but it's like a meat-like substance. I mean, yeah. they found everything from ammonia to chloride to even horse products inside, and, the, and inside the our meat and our, and our conventional meats overall. So it's wow. almost like a, it's like a Frankenburger. So yeah, a little bit of Mr. Ed on the side. <laughs> Um, but really, uh, it's, so you want to eat grass-fed meat, lean meat. Grass-fed. Grass-fed, yeah. free-range chickens, uh, basically the eggs as well. That's where yeah. you get your good fats, your good protein on your omega-3s. Uh, right. Wild-caught fish, staying away from any farm-raised things uh, because this we need protein for muscle development, yeah. uh, health in our body overall, and to kind of rest. As we rest and recuperate at night, we need the proper fuel. Mm-hmm. So the good protein is always essential. But a lot of people, if you work out or active like yourself and myself, mm-hmm. um, a lot of people push the envelope and go high protein, which a lot of people go with those like caveman paleo diets. Okay. But what the research is showing is that you need to have still have a good balance of healthy fats and good protein. So that's why the second phase for anyone watching is changing the fats you eat. So not, and a lot of individuals benefit from a good fat intake. And for the ladies listening, uh, that's a common question, I guess. If you eat more fat, what does your brain actually tell you that what's going to happen is I'm going to get fat, but it couldn't be farther from the truth. Good, really? fat, good fat actually stimulates your fat metabolism. Bad to, fat, to burn it off. Yeah, to burn it off, whereas bad fat actually triggers insulin responses and basically I've never, heard of, I've never heard of good fat until I came across you. Can you give an example of what a good fat is? A good fat would be like your avocados that are the fat, the saturated fats in avocado, oh, your you know coconut that. oil. Yeah. Um, for those who are doing like keto or the people out there familiar with like the bulletproof plan where you're doing MCT oil. MCT oil is the medium yeah. chain triglycerides basically refined from coconut oil, which is a great oil to cook with for your skin overall for internal digestion. I my coffee. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, MCT oil. Yeah, the MCT oil. And so the reason why that is good is good fats also help cut cravings. Because most of you know, Mm. when it comes to craving, this rule kind of supersedes that. Because when you crave, what happens? You cave. And when you cave... We're back at Portillo's at you know yeah. two thirty this afternoon Got because it. we didn't plan. And so if you create these guidelines of making sure the meat you eat is clean, you're going to forego that. Like uh, you know, for myself, I, I've trained my mind and got to the mindset that I am what I eat, and that's going to build a sick body over time. Yeah. yeah granted, if we went for an In-N-Out burger, I'd probably enjoy it. Probably taste good, yeah. but I'm not necessarily going to regret it because of my lifestyle being so healthy. But for most of you, a vacation day is the salad. You know, versus the opposite. I think Time Magazine had a a journal study showing that I think it was about over 4,000 people they pulled. About 95% of them could not remember the last time they ate a vegetable or had a salad. (laughs) So that's not, that's a bad statistic, you know, overall. So you want to be able to get in there and get good meats and good fats. So you want the the coconut oil. You don't want to, they've already, I know the FDA and government agencies have already banned trans fats. I think they have about three years to get them out. And for all those people who told us, remember, I never really trust many of our government agencies. This is yeah. not a conspiracy theory we're yeah. going out there. But what are, have their recommendations ever been good or why do they keep changing? Don't eat eggs. Yeah. Don't eat the yolk. 
actually now eat the whole egg because it was actually healthy to begin <laughs> with. Yeah. Don't eat butter. Butter's bad. Switch to margarine. Margarine is basically a molecule away from basically plastic. It hardens your arteries and it has carcinogenic properties overall. So uh, if it if it's not butter or if it doesn't if it's not real, uh, it's basically it comes back to that principle too of my idea of like the body by God principles that you know the further you eat something from the way God put it here, yeah. it occurs naturally in nature. Yeah. The more harmful it is if swallowed. Simple principle. Yeah. I mean, like the, the more you mess with the meat, the more you make bad fats or man-made products. Yeah. I remember like picking up a, a packet of cheese and crackers once in the airport and it wasn't even cheese. It was a cheese food. You know, it's like. So it wasn't cheese. It's, yeah. It's like. Wait, wait, we got it. Yeah. So you want to eat let's, whole I mean, food and natural. Let's, let's talk about that, Doc, because I I'm so, I sometimes get confused in the, in the busyness of our day and sometimes you don't have the opportunity to prepare food, maybe that's a discipline we need to do better of. Sure. But if I'm out and about and I'm looking for a place to eat and I'm almost right there from caving. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. Uh, right? Because we're craving. Uh-huh. What's a healthy alternative? If you're in our shoes, yeah. right, and I'm driving down downtown, I'm driving down here on, on, on Butterfield, uh-huh. not to endorse any restaurants sure. or, or uh-huh. you know, company, yeah. what, what would you be looking for? Okay. What would you put? What would I? Body? What I would jump? What What are like my go tos? Like if yeah. I'm in a pinch or something like that. That's a great question because um, there's like the lesser of the evils. And I know even <laughs> places. I know even even places like a, a Panera have gone to like antibiotic free chickens, and they're moving in the right direction. I'd probably get a salad, or I might go to I might go to like a a Chipotle and get mm-hmm. a, a salad. You know, and might I probably even like cut out the rice because I try and stay more grain free, which will be like the third principle we'll cover overall. Oh, but wow. you know, getting the good meats, and they they also uh, really uh, fashion themselves to uh, put themselves to raising and using products that are hormone free, antibiotic free. So it's maybe not organic, but it's it's better than like I said, the dollar burgers from Wendy's, Burger King, or McDonald's. You know, you know it shocked me about Chipotle. You know, just studying their business, mm-hmm. they've been around since 1995. Yeah, right? and and their deal was. Free range chicken yeah, they, and they good start off small, ingredients. Yeah. yeah, the kind of farmed kind of the idea is like our way our parents or grandparents. Were, it was like farm to table. Yeah, yeah. A lot of restaurants and places are looking to do that. So if I'm on my I'm like using Google Maps or any place, I'm, yeah. I just basically type in grass fed burger yeah. and something's going to pop up probably like in a like a ten you know a ten mile ten minute radius from where you're at and such yeah. like that. So I look for that. Uh, switching, you know, I t- try and stay away from fried food as well because that goes back to bad fats. No, no Kentucky Fried Chicken, no, no, no Harold's Chicken, no, no Popeye's. Sorry, man. Colonel's special recipe is off the menu. So yes, uh, uh, Arturo wants to know is carnitas. Is carnitas still healthy, man? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, because it's the way it's prepared. It's prepared. Yeah. Just, just making sure it's yeah, the, it comes from a good, a good cow. You want sick cows there you go. your sick meat and such like that. So yeah, I love, I love different ethnic foods, like from Indian to Asian to even uh, to Mexican cuisine. But yeah. a lot of those cultures rely heavily on carbs like yeah. white rice like i always say like that drives right into the the topic of those carbs yeah. three white guys are white bread white rice white pasta you know and so the three amigos no, of, no more uh, enriched yeah. flour no uh, because that's what the white is from yeah basically yeah. it's it's a it's basically a transition away from like mainlining just sugar into your bloodstream it's not fat that makes you fat not protein it's sugar because sugar spikes our insulin and most people listening in this issue have heavy issues with insulin problems they might even be heading towards diabetes but if you look at cultural representation, probably 50% of the people listening right now are pre-diabetic or diabetic or have some kind of metabolic syndrome. And so. we, we deal with it all the time because our guys, you know, we're in the insurance industry. Our, our life insurance agents that go out there help, you know, whether you're black, Mexican, Latino, Asian, whatever. It seems to me that every ethnic mm-hmm. demographic has some form of uh, health issue that's yeah. specific to, right? Sure, yeah, to like, cultural like, like, it's very it's cultural. cultural, yeah. Like Filipinos were, were high on heart attacks, cancer, and gout. Sure. You know, African American, well, I see them on, on diabetes. Mm-hmm. Mexican, a, a mix of mix of the two. Yeah. It's a How do we avoid that? How do we? Well, follow these th- three simple yeah. rules. Yes, follow, and you'll be. Follow or, the rules. You, you, you want to what what, the, what these steps do is build a foundation. But for many of us, we're actually we need to reverse some of this. We need to like yeah. put the car in reverse and take our health back to the starting line and create a clean slate. This this lifestyle. It makes change, but it's time. It takes sometimes 6, 12, 18 months. It takes about 18 months to get a new you. So if yeah. we don't make sure the 2019 version of these bodies, these beautiful yeah. these beautiful vehicles that we <laughs> cruise the highway of life are are not turning into jalopies, that's what we do. We, we're, we're a group of trillions of cells that turn over every day. We get new skin. 
we grow new hair. I don't have as much hair as I had last year. But <laughs> needless to say, our body turns over and you are what you eat at a cellular level. Most people go, when I'm eating this burger, I'm actually making a heart. The heart I'll have this today, tomorrow, and 10 years from now. It's going to show so up. It's going to show up over time. So yeah. the body is self-healing. There's a lot of grace, I know, spiritually, but there's grace physically that we can yeah. make some dumb choices and may have some mistakes. Life is not a game of perfect, but by following these guidelines of getting the good fats, getting the good proteins, choosing the good meats, Fats are great because it reduces also inflammation. Yeah. Most people have chronic inflammation. Yeah. Their, their joints hurt. They get headaches. They have asthma allergies. They, that's that's know, what I go see him for. Pain. So <laughs> it, it makes any problem worse. It's dumping gasoline on the fire yeah. and those refined carbohydrates. If anything, if anyone could do one thing, it'd be going on a low carb diet. Like you will, carbs retain more water. Most of my patients, once they go grain free for like 30 days, they'll add an average to lose 10 to 20 pounds yeah. in excess water weight yeah. and fat. Just it's it's, it's tough to ask Filipinos, Latinos to get off of rice. Yeah. You know, um, which is something that uh, I was shocked to hear. Like, really? I got to cut up rice? Yeah. Like, I can't eat rice because we grow up with rice. Sure. You okay. know, arroz con, uh, con gandules, arroz right, uh, uh, Mexican rice. Filipino rice. Uh, somebody asked about jasmine rice. Is yeah. jasmine, rice, it's rice well, is rice. Rice is just rice. I mean, yeah. there's better forms. You, you can get organic brown rice. It's still rice. rice. It's still it's still carbohydrate that will convert. Everything basically will convert. All carbs convert to sugar. Just some convert slower. Yeah. And so, so bread, pasta, white rice, all the things. It's like your body turns it turns it to glucose. Then your body has to dump all the insulin from your pancreas into your body. And now you've got the crash that's about to happen. Our body's physiologically around 12 to 2, hit a little bit of a hump. I don't yeah. know if you get it, but I get it once I'm like, I'm getting tired. It was it a food coma from lunch. And even though I'm eating clean, it's just that's part of our physiology. That's why I think they have it better over in Europe. What do they do about this time of day? Siesta. That's right. We go home for a couple hours, but maybe have some espresso, yeah. you know, relax. And we yeah. head back for a couple hours in the afternoon. We just go, go, go. Yeah. And we push, push, push. And that transition of how we eat is so important because it will fuel the rest of your day uh, and especially keep your energy levels because people hit those dips and that's insulin. So it, that takes me to like the biggest term that most people sitting here watching this, listening to this would most likely rather be burning fat right now than mm -hmm. storing it. That's a safe bet. And so to turn that fat metabolism back on. When you go grain, you remove and reduce the carbohydrate intake of your day, uh, many times down to like 20 grams or so. A very small percentage of your day becomes the carbs what's, and all the refined carbs. What's so carbs? I got to cut out French fries. French fries. Mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. <laughs> that, what, that obviously, like, obviously that, rice. I know you got rid of that shrimp linguine, Alfredo linguine stuff that <laughs> yeah, we were yeah, partying yeah. on a couple of years ago. That was the last supper from that standpoint. Yeah. We had been with that one. No bun with the burger. No bun with the burger. Yeah, no, no, I, I no do. No buns with your burgers. Yeah, no bun. Yes. Just your meat. Yes. You <laughs> Veggie meat. So, meat. so when you, yeah, a lot of times I'll go, I'll get the grass-fed burger and I'll have it wrapped in lettuce, you know, or on a bed of field greens and th throw a nice, throw a big avocado, a couple slices of oh. avocado on there, some pico de gallo, like just jazz it up. Yeah. It's still the centerpiece. It's still a burger. Yeah. I know a lot of us, we love the carbs. Why not, you know, per Pearl, let's talk about headaches. Can, can, uh, poor eating habits cause headaches. Absolutely. Headaches are a sign of one nerve pressure interference, which I deal with very clinically as a chiropractor. Um, headaches, most people get them because of poor posture, misalignments of their neck and stress on the nervous system, especially right by the base of the skull up here. Because what are we doing all day long? Yeah, we got tech snack. We got tech, tech shoulders. We, we're all hunched and slouched. We're, we're getting that granny hump in our 40s, you know, and so it's already starting to flip the switch. And so, um, but yeah, uh, headaches are a sign of inflammation to the nervous system and poor eating habits. I've had a lot of individuals, once they clear up their eating, oh, many of their health issues, the, the intensity and the frequency of headaches, mm -hmm. joint pain, digestive problems. Yeah all begin to lower. The problem is most of us, we push through, we go to the doctor and what we, what, rather than changing lifestyle, what would we rather take? A pill. A pill, a lotion, a potion, yeah. you know, anything to get us from being proactive and to be responsible with our health to make the right choices. But because I talk to so many people that say have high blood pressure or cholesterol or diabetes, and they'll just say, oh, I'm, I've got it under control. I'm like, oh, what lifestyle change are you making? I'm like, oh, I've got, I've got metformin, I've got my high blood pressure drug, and Lipitor. And I got Ambien, so the little butterfly lands on my butt and I fall asleep at night. You know, like, so yeah, yeah. it's like everything is a chemical pathway that's being altered, and you're, you're, you're push, pushing through. You're allowing all – because it is, the heart disease is still building. Yeah. The diabetes is still raging. The cancer – that's being formed in the body from improper eating and toxicity, altering and damaging your DNA is still underneath the scenes. Because what, what is really the first symptom of a heart attack or heart disease? It's like 
Yeah. Oh, and fifty percent of the time, it's hasta la vista, baby. You know, wow. or you know, what are the symptoms of diabetes when it's developing? You know, people are really not noticing it. And, and when, if they have neuropathy and their vision's going, that's like end stage. You know, they waited way too long, and yeah. most people don't in gear the right yeah. way. So that these these changes, well, what they do is actually build a better you at a cellular level, and that's what, why these changes are so important. They reduce the the inflammation that's damaging your cells because, like I said, our body is just cells that have formulated and created organs, mm. skins and tissue. Yeah. But when you get cells that start functioning improperly and are damaged and those cells reproduce, mm. everybody knows that's what basically becomes a tumor from that standpoint. So in the aspect of re- re- changing and reversing disease, getting a healthy body by getting rid of the carbs, we're, di- we're removing everything that damages our body at a cellular level, the mm. bad protein, the bad fats, the toxins and bad meat, the bad fats and their hydrogenated forms and all the, the grains and carbs. Do, do you have a, do you have a Ross that we can put on the show notes? Yeah, absolutely. In the descriptions, we can say what the bad fats are. Sure. Yeah. I'd be and, happy to do and that. Of course, a link, a link to your yeah. practice. Yeah. A lot of times, in, in lots Willowbrook. times, lots of times when we're free flowing, this is like drinking from a fire hose. Yeah. Just like, <laughs> I, 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 would, I pick like one thing and yeah, maybe yeah. it was get rid of the bun on my burger and wrap it in lettuce. It's, it's baby steps. Okay. I think of the same way with my relationship with God, you take, you take steps towards God, take steps through you. Yeah. You start running, he takes bounds, you know, to come yeah. and meet you. And your health Amen. does the same thing. You turn yeah. things around. You know, granted, uh, there's not too many. I, you know, when people uh, even think of spiritual spiritual changes, there. You know, when people are saved, there's a rejoicing in heaven. I don't know if there's a rejoicing when we lose ten pounds. But <laughs> uh, Peter said, "I hope you prosper." Or, uh, uh, or Paul said, "I hope that you prosper in our good health, just as your soul prospers." Mm. So health is important in that standpoint. You know, we're encouraged to run for the prize. Yeah. Like our bodies train it like an athlete, yeah. and that's both just like a metaphor. There are t- there are ones that are starting to come around to this principle, mm-hmm. but most of them, if you're sitting down, like I don't know, like an Applebee's or some standard restaurant, yeah. or we end up at Denny's at like four. How, in the how about the place I was a server at? How about Olive Garden? Olive Garden, yes. <laughs> Stay away from the endless breadsticks. Go with, <laughs> I'll go with endless salad. That might be at least your first choice in the right direction. Yet yeah, Italian restaurants are trouble because it's uh, it's all just high carbs. I grew up yeah. a good part of my family is Italian in origin, so like yeah, the pasta was a big part of get-togethers and meals. So you could go the gluten-free route. Out, yeah, but it grew, it's still grains, you know. So a lot of people, I eat gluten free, not not due to maybe like an issue with celiacs, yeah. but it's a healthier, just reducing the grain intake overall. Because we can get gluten free Oreos, doesn't mean gluten free. It's like yeah. gluten free has become the buzzword. As long as gluten free, it's healthier. And there's a lot of but it's marketing. Yeah, it's marketing. GMO. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all these things that kind of triggers that. Oh, if it says all natural, it must be healthy. It may even say organic, but maybe all the first, the only thing that had needed to be organic was the first ingredient. Yeah. And they slap it on the label. So do such. people have to buy at Whole Foods to eat healthy? No, I mean most, okay. almost every store is brought over, even to like Walmart. I uh, do a lot of actually my shopping at Costco because um, they actually carry more organic food than. Uh, Whole Foods, really you know, by volume. So yeah, wow. you, you get your organic eggs, your chicken, your uh, hamburger meat there. Uh, a lot of your greens. I, I like the hydroponic uh, uh, lettuce. Yeah, the, the lettuce. I tear, I tear that up. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's so easy and light to eat. Sure, and that's yeah. what you, you take like those big lettuce leaves. That's what you wrap your grass fed burger in your organic yeah. burger, and you're, you're good to go. You were mentioning no more pretzel bun. No? Yeah, the pretzel bun. It's, it is good. I'm not going to deny that the pretzel bun is an excellent creation, uh, but uh, but. In moderation. Hey, if one, if once a month you you splurge on the pretzel bun, I'm not going to throw you under the bus. But like I said, most people's vacation meal is like a salad. Like I guess I'll try a salad today. I'm going to eat healthy. You're like you know, like people get on like those those like yeah. like sporadic health kicks and such like that, where it's just like a lifestyle. Choice. So really, you're you're you. Uh, I see the theme here is really incorporating grains and greens. Yeah, into get, our diet getting, as well. Yeah, getting all those healthy things and a good substitute for rice. If we're just kind of wrapping on that, is uh, I've gone over the last maybe five or six years uh, to pulsed cauliflower rice. So you can take your cauliflower, chop it up. I know even like at Costco, they sell big bags of cauliflower rice now, and it it's very uh, it's starchy. It's a good it's a good uh, carb, a good vegetable to eat. Doesn't raise your blood sugar levels or anything like that. Cauliflower, so, cauliflower rice. Yeah, you it's it's very it's very uh, seasonable, meaning like it'll take the flavor of whatever you're kind of using it, and that's what you use. Like so, I'll make a stir fry, and that'll be the base is cauliflower rice. Wow. So, okay. Yeah, it's a great way, great thing if you're if you're looking for that texture and you want something to fill you up because that's what rice does. It just kind of just fills you up, but yeah. it, it bloats the stomach. It, you know, then you, like I said, you're spiking insulin. Insulin's inflammatory. And over time, the more you, you, you're exposed to it, the more it burns out your cells receptors. Yeah. So then you, that's how you start heading towards diabetes. So a third of us, we're leaving next Thursday okay. for Greece. Nice. Right, we're going uh, Opa. nine days. Opa, Opa right? yes. So <laughs> what should be, we be looking for as we're touring? Because we're going to be on a cruise ship. Yeah. Well, Santorini. The, the, all good, that good the good news with 
really uh, Mediterranean diets is they're typically very healthy. Like really? very a lot of like fresh caught fish, salads. When I was in Italy, it was funny. Uh, when last time I was in Italy, even trying the food, it's like. I, I would ha even try some of the pasta or grab a slice of pizza and I'd have zero gut issues because they use the ancient grains. And that's the kind of tangent, but you can get like the icorn flour, like the ancient grains, like the way wheat was. Everything that we grow is genetically modified in the sense it's not in its original form. The wheat we grow is highly processed, highly refined. That's why the gluten has such a terrible time on our digestive system. And plus with all the pesticides, herbicides, and genetically modifying from Monsanto or things that's great. It, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Don't not go down that at all. But basically, uh, uh, when you it, it disturbs everything. So typically, you can even go, you can even enjoy some of the cuisine without it having such a negative impact. And because you'll be moving and grooving, most people when they go to Europe, they actually come back lighter and they really? eat like beasts the entire yes, time. So yes, yes. you're you're going to come across less problems because everything is kind of farm to table. Okay, it's going to be fresh. You're, you'll be hard pressed to find a Portillo's, you know, in, in, by the Parthenon in, or <laughs> <laughs> in Athens, in Athens, you know, or Sparta. Wherever. So yeah, yeah, when you're traveling overseas, I said that's the biggest thing I've I've noticed is like you can eat and enjoy and indulge in the cuisine, and it's like almost zero uh, net negative effect because it's whole. It's or they yeah. don't they don't they have a lot of things. It's really interesting that most of the things that are banned here are banned that aren't banned here are banned overseas, like right. the use of genetic modification, the use of certain pesticides and herbicides on their crops. Everything yeah. they don't alter. They like to keep things in, in its original form. So you're going to be pretty good to go. But yeah, awesome. Eat it up. That, by the way, you're listening to Dr. Mead, my chiropractor working on me. He puts his hands on me once, twice, once or twice. It should be more often, right, Doc? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're you're uh, a man on the mood, so you at least – the thing is you make time for these things, yeah. and you, you make it a priority, and that's what we people don't do. Like people get so crazy busy that they, they make excuses not to take care of themselves. Or like I'll do it next month, or I'll do it – you know, it, it just – now's the best time to take yeah. action. When should you start investing? Yeah. Now. Yeah. But, same thing with our health. It's yeah. – Co compound interest works the same with yeah. our health. Yep. You are going you – you're, you're not going to be able to reap – There's when you go – Thing is, you can't eat poorly, not exercise, not move well, and sleep well. And and when it comes to sowing and reaping, you cannot pray for crop failure when it comes to your health. You know, like no. can't say like, no. yeah, and, and you can't pray over a Sunday and make it to give the nutritional benefits of broccoli. You know, yeah. so like there's some great things that prayer is great for, but when it comes to our health, you know, you, there is comes back to that great stewardship, yep. sowing and reaping, and and taking action today. And gotcha. It's like baby step number one. Good. So all right, guys, I hope you get some major value. Um, which. We lost. Okay, gotcha. We're about to, we're about to include him, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna be doing something here. We're, we're gonna get um, our uh, next guest onto as well. Um, he, he's got some things to share with us too, as well some updates. But we're gonna do something I've never done before on Facebook Live. Uh, maybe some of you have never seen it before, but Doctor Mead here is gonna give me one adjustment. I don't know, sit in the sitting position, yes. whatever he feels I need, whatever that might be. Yeah. Uh, but you guys will see a, a chiropractic exam. A lot of times people have heard of it. Uh, maybe you guys have seen it, but none of you have seen it live. And Dr. Me is going to explain uh, what he's doing and what the, the proper technique is and what we're looking to relieve or um, uh, uh, improve. Yes, absolutely. Right? Very so, good. Yeah, that'll be a really good thing to do. So um, gotcha. we're going to set this up here? Yeah, we're going to set this up. Do we grab the, a short chair? Is, is, he, is he on? Uh, did, did we lose him or? Yeah, we lost him. I'm texting him right now. Okay, gotcha. Okay, cool. Well, while we're waiting on him, uh, why don't we do this right now then? Okay, you want me to grab this chair, bring it around? Okay. Is that okay? Because then you'll be I'll, you'll be down okay. my level. So okay. So we'll just we'll do something right here. We're we're, yeah. we're low. We're lower this down. All right. Nice. So um, for those who are new to chiropractic or, you know, go frequently to a chiropractor they love and enjoy, the purpose of chiropractic is removing nerve interference that builds up in the spine. Right up here in this colossal cranium of knowledge and wisdom <laughs> is the most amazing healing power. But the Woo! way it connects and heals Matt's body is through the spinal cord and out every single nerve. There's 24 sets of nerves through his back and spine that tell him to breathe, his heart to beat, his body digest his food, to move his arms, his fingers, his toes, to have a great workout. And when that connection is disturbed, it causes sickness and disease because what flows through those nerves is healing. So every misalignment starts to put pressure slowly on a nerve, whether it be your heart or stomach. Because everyone gets the idea, if someone came yeah. over and cut those nerves, it'd be over. Why don't what, 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 we do a quick time? Since Shorty is here right now, I see him online there. Okay. So, all right, we got this frame. We're going we're to jump to Shorty because he's in, in the middle of getting to his next uh, meeting because he's high in demand. 
So, uh, Brent, let's include them. Uh, let, let's bring them to the show real quick. And when we keep you uh, posted, stay tuned because we're going to do this adjustment. Nice. But we're excited to have our friend, Jose Shorty Torres, fresh from his UFC debut in Utica, New York. Knock him out. Knock that as a point. Shorty, welcome to the show, brother. I appreciate it, man. It's always a great time to be on. Awesome, man. Good. Hey, brother, talk to us, man, because you took the fight on how many days' notice? I took, I the, took fight the fight on nine, nine days' day notice. notice. I had, I had, I had 26, 26 pounds, do every single medical test for uh, New York Athletic State Commission, do all the tests for USADA, do all the paperwork for the UFC. I mean, I didn't even get to notice I was in the UFC until I had my fight day. Wow. So, so we're here with my chiropractor, Dr. Mead, and I know chiropractic health is very important to you training and, and getting you at the most optimal health. Bro, what was it like, man? It dropped 25 pounds in eight days. It was, it was definitely brutal. It was the biggest thing about dropping it is you know you can do it, but it's more mental. You know, so you know, you're not eating as much, you're not drinking as much. I'm only drinking a gallon of uh, water a day, which is eight pounds, and I'm losing 10 to 12 pounds a day. I mean, the very first day, I lost nine pounds, and I weighed 140, I think I was 142, 141-ish, and, you know, eventually your body starts fatigued because you're working out. There's no breaks whatsoever. You're working out two times a day, and the worst thing about it is I'm in sauna, hot tubs, heat, 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 yeah. and I'm in that for maybe four hours in the day. I know we went to a Russian bathhouse. And I was, maybe, <laughs> we, we went to a Russian bathhouse two days in a row and I was there in heat for six hours trying to lose the weight. So bro, t- tell me about this real quick. I, we, we've been talking about health and wellness over here. Being Puerto Rican Mexican, what, what do you have to do to eat right to get you to fight right? The biggest thing is, you know, it is your diet. You know, for people, anyone trying to lose weight. 70% of your diet is going to be your weight loss. You know, excuse me, your weight loss is going to be 70% of your diet. The other 30% is going to be working out, all that stuff. So if you're not eating properly, you know, pretty much giving the, the right fuel to your car, your engine, you're just not going to run properly. You know, so for me, you know, I do chiropractic work. I do this. I do that. I do everything possible to just stay in shape. And for me, you know, that nine day notice, I was getting ready for a 145 pound title fight. Nevertheless, a 125 pound UFC debut. So, it was definitely very different. Immediately, we split the switch on what we had to eat, how much we had to drink, the type of water we're drinking, the type of food. We took out all carbs, all sugar, all salt. So you can definitely you know, say that I had maybe 20 minutes of energy in, in every workout. And then after that, it's just all mental, just trying to push it and then trying to work out properly, knowing that I only have so much. So what am I going to do to keep the, the sweat going? Got it. So, so as uh, growing, up, growing up in a Latino diet, what did you see that you had to start cutting out to become a professional fighter? It was definitely a lot of rice. Definitely a lot of rice. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. we just, we just, no more the arroz con gandules, huh? Yeah, they got to take away the tortillas and all that stuff, which is funny because I got home yesterday. The first thing I ate was arroz con gandules. But, <laughs> um, yeah, man, you know, being Puerto Rican, there's everything's fried. Being Mexican, everything's, you know, smothered in, in oil and all these juices. So, you know, it's you can still have all of that, but it's – everything's portioning, you know, a lifestyle change. I mean, even when I'm down at American Top Team, I'm doing my camp, everyone's meal prepping for themselves and I'm making tacos and they're like, is that healthy? I was like, yeah, I made it myself. I did it this way instead of, you know, all the other ingredients that make it that much more, you know, fatty, if you want to say. So being proper, and it's one of those things that's, it's, everything's mental. You know, weight management is mental. A diet is mental. A lifestyle change is mental. You know, and that's what I try to go under when I'm doing all these uh, big weight cuts. It's more of a lifestyle change instead of a diet. Bro, we're so proud of you, man. You made it to the octagon, man. You made you made it to the UFC. Cicero, we got a UFC fighter out there. What's it like, man, to persevere, be mentally and physically disciplined, and finally start hitting your goals, brother? I can finally say, yes, I do UFC. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's honestly a dream come true. I didn't really get to reflect that until pretty much fight day when I got in the octagon and I'm walking out looking like Manny Pacquiao where I'm like, ah, you yeah, know, like bouncing around, walking out ready to fight because I was so busy. You know, I had no time to, to really reflect on the whole thing. I didn't even get any time to really practice for the fight. You know, I just jumped right in. And by the time I got in there, you know, I'm just like, I'm in the UFC. Oh my God, this is, this is awesome. So, yeah. you know, yeah. it, 
be a dream come true. I've been doing this since I was four years old, over 20 plus years of experience. And, you know, I've been through my hard, you know, my, my fair share of, you know, the grind and, you know, ups and downs. But, I mean, everyone has their story. And that's why I always say if, if this shorty can do it, so can you. You know, I made out of the neighborhood. I don't see why you guys can't as well. So that's why I'm always trying to do community stuff and talking to kids and doing that because I'm a prime example, you know, in my community of saying I never gave up. You know, I never made an excuse. I've been denied by the UFC nine times. But the ninth time, I made it. Didn't matter what my accolades were. Didn't matter if I was two-time world champ, two different weight classes, whatever the case may be. I'm the most decorated amateur in the world and one of the most decorated prospects before the UFC. And it took me over two years to finally get in. I never gave up. And, and you know just as well as you got to keep on grinding. There's going to be tough times, but it's the push that – that really makes it that much better and more satisfying when you finally reach it. And the best part about it, Shorty, taking the fight in eight days, it's obvious that you stayed prepared. You know, some, some guys that go in shape, out of shape, in shape, out of you just continue to stay in shape. And I remember your last fight with Titan FC, you knocked the guy out in the first round, uh, but you stayed healthy. You came back here to Chicago. We celebrated your fight. Bar. Speaking of which, your victory party, where were we on your victory party? We were back at the outpost. Yeah, Victory Party Output Lounge on Friday night, 9 p.m. to uh, 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. Pretty much, you know, I'll definitely be selling shorty gear. I'll be doing another raffle to help the kids in my gym. 20% of all the earnings at Output will go to the kids in my gym to travel to Florida this uh, this August to compete in the Kickboxing World Championships. And it's, you know, again, it's a great experience. It doesn't just help me, but it helps the kids. And it's uh it's it's awesome to see guys again come out of the woodworks, whether they're old friends, new friends, new fans, old fans, coming in and just celebrating a, a, a fantastic victory. And again, that's why I always do say we can, we will together. We are Team Shorty because if it wasn't for everyone else, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. And by the way, I, the, one of the things that you raffle off that evening was a very highly coveted um, thing that people are fighting and donating a lot of money for, bro. They're look they're looking to get your chonies. Yeah, your UFC shorts. <laughs> Last time I started fight, whoa, those are small. Yeah, that's what he wore inside the fight. Well, it's it's funny because I'm the the guy who won it is you know big. He weighs like two fifty. He's a giant meathead, and I keep on telling him every day. I was like, dude, you gotta try them on. They stretch. You you can make it work. They stretch. <laughs> <laughs> and then take a picture and put it on Instagram, and we'll all uh, drop show, a comment. Show me show me how big of a fan you really are. <laughs> And how really cold it is outside. Oh, exactly. Yeah, exactly, bro. Listen, man, we're, we're very proud of you, uh, Shorty. We, uh, we look forward to seeing you here this Friday at your victory party. Uh, we'll be there uh, on Friday night. And we'll, we'll post a link uh, in the show notes here, too, as well, man. We just want to let you know, man, we're very proud of you. But we're, you're on our wall here, man. You know that? <laughs> you're, you're on our wall here, autographed and everything, brother. Oh, I appreciate that, man. And, again, I, I love the – all the support you guys have given me, and it really does mean a lot. It definitely does help a lot. And, you know, I wouldn't be where I'm at if it weren't for all my sponsors, everyone helping me out. And, again, we can. We will together. We are Team Shorty, and I really appreciate all the love, guys. Outstanding, man. Listen, I'll, I'll let you go, man. I know you're in and out. You're high in demand today. This has something to do with you knocking your opponent on UFC, man. But uh, you're a champ, man. You inspire all of us. And uh, continue doing what you're doing. We can. We will. Together. I appreciate it, man. Take care, guys. All right, bro. Thanks, Shorty. My, that's my man, Shorty, nice. Jose Shorty Torres. We're very proud of him. Um, uh, originated here out of Cicero, went to Combat Doe right there on uh, on Cicero, right by in the old Olympic Theater. Uh, was it? What, what's it called now? Is it the Olympic Theater? What's it called now? I think they just shut down. They, they shut down the theater. <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> that's Cicero for you. We need yeah. more entrepreneurs out there. <laughs> but, guys, as, as we close off the show, man, uh, we promise you we do this. Yeah. But we're we're gonna do this. Yeah, we'll get you uh, okay, here okay. We'll, we go. we'll do it. We'll do an in chair adjustment. Yes. So check down here, so you guys can see what this is all about, what the hype is all about. Yeah. So cool. So as we get the power turned back on, we want to get pressure off Matt's spine and nervous system. Like I said, the best power flows from above down, inside out in our body. That's how our body heals itself. So uh, when uh, as a chiropractor, we look for those misalignments. I know Matt's spine not only because of what I can do f uh, with the, the exam process, but I've seen x-rays. And that's one of the key things <laughs> when looking for a chiropractor is we do very detailed work with imaging, 
motion studies to make sure that we can see exactly where your spine's working and where it's not. And since I'm familiar with this, I know exactly where his problematic areas are overall. But the common symptoms that people can hit with just the stress and tension in your neck when those nerves are being irritated were the headaches that we talked about earlier, sinus problems and allergies, the nerves that affect your thyroid and metabolism all come from your neck, and the nerves that go all the way from your top of your neck all the way to the fingers of your, the tips of your fingers. So numbness, tingling, carpal tunnel issues, even high blood pressure can all be related to uh, the neck and the nervous pressure. And then we talk about poor posture, decreasing your lung capacity. And that's another thing. It just starts to wear us out. So without further ado, as we yeah. work with Matt's spine here, I'll just relax. looking for these areas here of stress and tension uh, based off his spine. We come in and get that motion back in. I'll be dropping, relax your head here. Good. Oh, yeah. Then over here. Nice. Oh, yeah. Perfect. And we say the power is on. Boom! Yes, ready to yeah, he is ready to go. <laughs> Isn't that crazy, bro? <laughs> I'm good to go. Yeah, I, I say the power's on with this man now. He's ready to heal and change the world here with that and functioning close to 100% of his God given potential. I always say, God needs no help healing, just no interference. Yeah. Remove the bone, God does the healing. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, man, that's how we get it done. So, Dr. Mead, man, thanks for being a great uh, guest on the show, man. Yeah. Remember, every Wednesday we are here. Doing the Money Smart Show, 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. And Dr. Mead, how do people get a hold of you? Um, you can find me in Willowbrook. Uh, that's where my office is at Abundant Health Chiropractic. Uh, the website is www.docmead.com. That's D O C. M-E-A-D-E.com. Uh, you can set up appointments there or even shoot me a message. Hey, if you like, if you have questions about what we do and what we uh, talked about here, you can uh, set up a time, call the office. I even do on, uh, over the phone consultations to discuss health concerns. I know we unpacked a lot of information, but if you tuned in and you had anything that was confusing or wanted more uh, guidance on, I'd be happy to answer your questions personally. So feel free to drop me a line. And we'll definitely put his link here in the comment section on Facebook and in the show description notes on YouTube. Uh, the question here is, Dr. Me with Maximized Living. Yeah, um, I've worked with Maximized Living. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm really good. Uh, I worked with them for about a decade or so and then kind of gone solo and such like that. But we work a lot with their similar principles. I'm not a Maximized Living office, but I worked uh, in one for about six years. Yeah. Yeah. And his pra your, your practice is growing. I, I, uh, you just did a whole rem remodel yeah. about uh, a month ago. Sure. You got a cool hyperbaric chamber in there. Yeah, yeah. We've updated That's our awesome. system. So we do a lot of corrective and functional care. So correcting yeah. posture, alignment, exercising you the core of your spine, good at fit and moving. We've got practitioners that do everything from myofascial release to lymphatic drainage to deep tissue work. And as one of our, our fun toys now is a hyperbaric chamber. Yeah. So maybe, maybe we'll get shorty in there, you know, yeah. between fights, get him recovering faster. Uh, we'll happily sponsor uh, his, uh, if he's still <laughs> tuned in, we'll be a bunch of health chiropractor would be happy to sponsor you and your endeavors to uh, conquer the UFC. Uh, but yeah, that there's taking care of your health is a priority. So we help coach people in the aspects of nutrition, eating well, moving well, and thinking well. Uh, lifestyle changes from even incorporating essential oils um, all the way down to the baselines of foundational health. So that's it. And that's what allows me to operate as an entrepreneur doing what I do. Listen, guys, uh, I'm not getting any younger. I'm going to be 45 this year. I'm 44 now, but I'll be 45 at the end of this year. But what keeps me uh, fired up and conscious about well, where I want to go because if I want to create continued value in business, in my community, to our staff, to our uh, associates, to our new entrepreneurs that are coming up, I got to be in the best physical shape to be doing that for the long term. I know a lot of people depend on me. Uh, I know there's a responsibility, not just with my immediate family, but also in, in, in our business community. And for me to deliver that value, for me to deliver that service, I got to be working in, in optimal health at all times. And uh, this is an, a, a, an area of focus, focus point for me because you said something to me uh, when you started treating me. Your sign right in front of your door says pain is not a lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> I was in pain, military, Marine Corps, and all that stuff. And so I need to get out of pain. And then you, you taught me something about um, not uh, uh, a focus on health care, not sick care. Yes. Yeah. That was that was a big one. Yeah, it's a paradigm shift. It's a big yeah. thing we struggle, especially with prior parents. Or if you have parents like getting them away from the medical model, that medical merry-go-round, it's just been ingrained, yeah. you know, in them. And so, yeah, we want to focus on wellness care and health care versus sick care. Why don't treat the disease? Get the sick body well. Yeah, so. very good. Well, guys, listen. I, I think thank you for tuning in. If you've been sharing this, we're going to go back. Brandon's going to go back and and find the person that's shared this video the most. You're going to get a special invitation for me tonight. Uh, in addition to that as well, um, you might uh, find me at Dr. Mead's office when I pop in there and uh, on a Monday or a Wednesday or a Thursday, yeah. one, one of those days I pop in there, pop in, pop out, you know, no pun intended. Yeah, snap, snap, crackle, pop. <laughs> snap, crackle, pop. Yes. <laughs> that being said, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your comments. 
Uh, again, if you are watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like on our page. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe, hit the no- notification button, and be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. Remember, every Sunday morning, we lo- uh, uh, release a vlog teaching episode, which is called Living Money Smart. And every Wednesday, we're here uh, doing these live streams on Facebook. Uh, and if you're watching this live, thank you. If you're watching the replay, thank you as well. Thanks for tuning in. And on behalf of Dr. Mead, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Let me play that uh, theme music song again, man. Where is that? Peace out, guys. I'll see you guys soon.